Hi, everyone. My name is Elise Braverman Plotkin, and I'm going to be teaching today about Ahavat Olam. So, this is the evening prayer that is said right before we say the Shema. Um, there's a correlating prayer that we say in the morning uh, during Shachrit, but this is the prayer that we say in Marif. And the reason why this came to me to teach today was I was listening to a presentation online um, through the internet on Yoma Atzma'ut. And it was put together by Federation and in conjunction with um, New York and Israel and all sorts of different places. And it was interesting. And they ended up with a really beautiful um, song sung by the Platt brothers um, to, uh, they came up with their own melody um, and they used part of Ahavat Olam. And that melody really stuck with me and has really resonated with me since I heard it on Yoma Atzma'ut. So it got me thinking about this prayer that I've said, I don't know, probably thousands of times, um, and what it really means to us today um, going through what we're going through in 2020. And what was interesting to me is I came up with the question of what does the Sidor teach us about God's love? And what does that mean to us today? So if you look at Ahavat Olam, in Hebrew, it reads like this. Ahavat Olam, Beit Yisrael, Amcha Ahavta, Torah umitzvot, chukim umishpatim, otanu limadata, al ken Adonai Eloheinu, b'shabcheinu uvkumenu, nasiach b'chuchecha. And you can continue reading in the Hebrew. And it really struck me that this prayer is teaching us something about what um, it means for God to love us. So the, the first two words, ahavat olam, um, like all good, um, interesting Hebrew phrases, get a lot of different translations. What does ahavat mean? It means really love. What does olam mean? It can mean uh, timeless or um, some people translate it, endless is your love, or um, with, I've seen with consistency you have loved uh, um, your people, or with a great love. So the English, um, you know, like all good translations, takes a, a, a little, is always, um, I had a professor at, uh, at the Jewish Theological Seminary, and um, he used to say that um, every, every English translation is actually a little bit of a commentary on um, the Hebrew. But it, for our purposes, I wanted to translate it, endless is your love for your people Israel. You have taught us Torah and its mitzvot, laws, and judgment. Therefore, O oh God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we shall speak of your commandments and rejoice in your Torah and mitzvot forever. Day and night we will reflect on them. They are our life and the length of our days. Your love shall never depart from our hearts. And then the prayer ends, blessed are you eternal God who loves your people Israel. So that's really what I want to get into. What does this mean? How does God love us? So Chazal, the rabbis, the Talmudic sages, however you want to put them, um, they say that love is defined by behavior, that God's love is expressed to us, right, by giving us Torah, by giving us mitzvot, by giving us the laws, and by giving us judgment. It's really, what is Torah um, for us? It's instructions on how to live. 
So God loves us, and God gave us Torah. Our love for God is expressed in the performance of these mitzvot. It's how we behave in the world. So it's really, you need the two pieces together. It wouldn't be enough if God had just given us the Torah and we said, hey, great, this is nifty, and went on our merry way and did whatever we wanted to do. And it wouldn't be enough if we took some laws, um, Hammurabi's code or you know code of ethics or whatever it is, and we said, okay, now we're going to live by this. It's really you need the two together, the interchange of the two. Um, and so B'nai Israel, us, um, the people of Israel, and God are bound together. So God's gift of Torah is the, clo is the clearest sign of God's love for us. And I think that that's really what Ahavat Olam, that this prayer is telling us, that God has an abundant amount of love, an abundant amount of love, that God's love is really um, abundant, it's endless, it's overflowing. So like all good, um, uh, like all good uh, Talmud, there's a machloket, a, um, a argument, a discussion. Um, and the Talmud in um, Masachet Brachot, um, I think it's page 11b, if anybody wants to go look it up, um, they have a discussion. So when I started this presentation, right, what did I say? That in Shachrit, in the morning, there's one prayer that we say before uh, the Shema, and that Ahavat Olam um, is the prayer we say in Mariv, in the evening service. So in the morning, we say, Ahava Raba Ahavtanu. Um, and in the evening, we say Ahavat Olam. So the question is, why? So the Talmud um, doesn't know that, the Talmud hasn't um, set up the Sidur yet for us, right? The Talmud has this discussion. Well, what do you say? Should you say Ahava Raba or should you say Ahavat Olam, right? Which should you say? So in um, pure um, rabbinic, um, uh, in, in pure rabbinic uh, way, they say, actually, uh, we do both, right? So I sort of alluded to that uh, like 30 seconds ago when I said in Shachrit, we say Ahava Rabbah, and in Mariv, we say Ahavat Olam. Okay, so that's one um, way that the Talmud, that the rabbis resolve this machloket or this um, interchange, this question about which prayer, which, which love um, should we say before the Shema. So I think that there's some other readings here, right? One of the, um, one of the um, readings I saw, one of the interpretations is that there are different types of love. Right, when I started, um, when, you know, what question did I say? What does the Sidor teach us about God's love, right? Um, um, my kids are, were taught, you, you, we're always supposed to look at like, what's the essential question, right? So what's the essential question here? What does God's love for us, for B'nai Israel, look like? Um, so you could say almost that there's two different types of love. So in the beginning of a relationship or in the morning, right, sort of the beginning of the day, um, or in the beginning of a relationship, when you fall in love, you, you think, oh my God, this is a great love. Oh my God, right? So there you go. There's a Okay, um, but you don't know if this love is going to endure. You don't know if it's true love or if it's just, I don't know, a little crush or a little bit of love. But by the evening 
or as if you look at it in terms of relationship time, you know, later on into the relationship, um, we know that the love is still strong. Um, so that we know that the love is truly enduring. So that could be one reason why we say the avat olam in the evening and not in the morning, because we know by evening that God's love is still enduring, that it's not just the beginning, the, you know, the, um, the sort of like crush kind of love. Um, I read an interesting commentary um, from the Eighth Yosef. So he has a commentary on the sea door. Um, and this I found um, sort of both fascinating and, oh, I don't know, maybe a little, a little out there, a little far-fetched, maybe a little. Um, he said that the one letter, the letter Zion, um, is missing from these two prayers. So if you know anything about gematria, um, every Hebrew letter has a corresponding number. So Aleph is one, Bed is two, Gimel is three, okay. So um, Zion is the number seven. So why um, would the number seven be missing, or the letter Zion be missing from this prayer? Um, and he says that the Zion, or the number seven, references the seven potential types of love that are available in an immediate family. So what are these? The love of a parent, a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a son, a daughter, a spouse. So those are your seven immediate relatives. Um, and those are, like I said, it could be a little bit far-fetched, but I was sort of fascinated by this. Um, so those seven are missing in the tefillot, why? Because, you know, through the this letter Zion that's missing, um, this demonstrates that the love that God has for each and every one of us is even more powerful and goes beyond even the closest family bonds in life. So God, in essence, has infinite love for all of us, for all of God's creation. We know that when a child grows up with love, that child feels special. So that's even more so for all of us, that we have God's love. So we're first reminded um, of God's, you know, love through the Ahavat Olam, through this prayer. Um, and then it's only after we say Ahavat Olam that then we can say the Shema, which is the Shema and Viahafta, which is our love for God. So what does this mean to us today? Um, we all know that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it's Shavuot when you're watching this or a little bit before Shavuot or after Shavuot, but we're not together. We're not at B'nai Yashurin as a, as a large community as B'nai Yisrael. We're not, we're each in our own homes in front of our own computers or our own phones and we're watching this. And even though that's the case, and even though we can only pray either um, by ourselves with our door, or we can only come together through Zoom or through live streaming, even all that being so, we still have the Torah, we still have the mitzvot. We still have this blueprint that I started with of God's love for us. God still has shown us the way that God loves us. 
And I think that there's a little bit of that that I felt when I heard the Platt brothers sing um, Ahavat Olam. Wait, I'm going to switch there. When I heard them sing Ahavat Olam on Yom Ha'atzma'ut. So um, I want to thank you all for listening and for joining me in looking into what it means for God to love B'nai Yisrael. And I'd like to thank you. And I'd like to leave everybody with the Platt Brothers version of Ahavat Olam. Chag Sameach, and may you all go for strength to strength. Thank you.